Hi, everybody, and welcome to Parkinson's Disease Education, um, where we attempt to demystify the disease and to empower you as the person with Parkinson's to reach your true potential. I have a special video for you today. This is going to be a reaction, a candid reaction to the film Shaking Hands with the Devil by David Plummer. Now, David Plummer is a person with Parkinson's disease. I had not heard of him before this, uh, but no doubt he'll be famous now. Um, this video um, seems to be taking the world of Parkinson's disease um, by storm in terms of it's the news is spreading quickly is what I'm trying to say. It's uh, been a very popular topic on social media. And I saw that LSVT Global was one of the sponsors and they're a big name in the Parkinson's world. I'm an LSVT certified therapist. Um, and by the way, for those of you new to the channel, I'm Dr. Michael Hyland. I'm a physical therapist. And, um, and this is channel that I run dedicated to educating persons with Parkinson's all over the world. Uh, but anyway, this video is going to be a reaction. And I got permission from Dr. Natasha uh, fothergill Misba, who was uh, apparently medical uh, consultant uh, involved in making the film. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you, to getting your reactions in the comments. But uh, I'm looking forward to having a candid reaction to it um, and finding out what the experience is of persons with Parkinson's living in a developing country like Kenya. Um, and uh, seeing the, having seen the trailer, that's the, that's the only part that uh, gives me an idea of what's coming. Because uh, seeing the trailer, I get an idea of how difficult things might be. So without further ado, let's go right into the reaction. My name is David Plummer. In 2009, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. In this short documentary, I intend to highlight the plight of Parkinson's sufferers in Kenya. Little did I know making it would leave me shocked, exhausted and withdrawn. This seems like paradise when you first get here. Looking at this gorgeous sunrise and on the beach. But I've learned having Parkinson's disease this place could be hell sometimes. With this film, I'm hoping to change perception. I've never been one for championing and raising awareness historically because my thoughts are everyone knows what Parkinson's disease is. I just want to find oh. a bloody cure. But quite an assumption, actually. Where I've worked abroad, I'm, I'm fighting not only trying to find a cure, but trying to raise awareness. People don't even know what it is. It's true. I set off on my journey to meet sufferers and their families who had previously been identified by Dr. Natasha fothergill Mizbar, a specialist on Parkinson's research in Kenya. I decided to come off my medication when meeting these sufferers because most of them had no access to medication or health care. Mm. Mm. So we got off medication. So when uh, wow. he first got sick, we didn't even know what the problem was ourselves. He had problems in almost every system of the body. He had even developed tremors. And uh, with the community around, well, the first thing they thought was that you're giving him a lot of stresses. The stress has brought this disease. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Just go to church, it'll get better. No, I'm sure you didn't. Going 
kulingana na experience ile nimekuwa nayo kwa kazi ya Mungu ona wakati mwingine hivi spirit waziko eh ah ona wanafanya ku 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 Oh, that was English. To a doctor, he is the first person who diagnosed that there was something called Parkinson. Even after being diagnosed and even taking the medication, mom still felt like, no, we can just pray and this thing can end. <sighs> On my family, it really affected us. In fact, it really brought us down to almost zero because the drugs were very expensive and uh, not easy to find. Yeah. For me it has been a burden. I've been having a burden in my heart. A very big burden. Sometimes I do get emotional, but I don't want him to see it. Like sometimes I can feel like I want to cry, but I can just walk away. Because missing my dad. My dad has been my superhero. You stay with a patient like that for a long time. He becomes part of you in life. And when he leaves you, there's a lot of a great loneliness you'll suffer. If you would just rest. Sometimes you think that, like, God, if you just can't help that, if the medication just can't help, then just let him rest. Let him rest. That's heartbreaking. Just let him die, basically. I was introduced to a private healthcare doctor who only confirmed these stories. I have to stop for a second. I can only imagine the hell that these people go through without medication. And it, it impresses me that uh, David went off medication in solidarity with these people when he met with them. Uh, that took guts. And wow. Um, I've, I've seen what off times look like. I've seen people at their worst in treating this disease uh, every day of, of work with people and uh, in our therapy practice. And so I can only imagine not having medication with these people, the hell that they're going through. I just can't even imagine. In a private, you can see like 100 patients, like on average. In a public, you can see 2000s. So you might miss some diagnosis and some patients presenting with obvious symptoms. If you're not diagnosed correctly, you'll just be hopping around diagnosis, May taking this medication for the wrong diagnosis. So many people will give up. On the medication can they afford the medication can they afford to go and see the neurologist or the neurosurgeon there is so many uh misbelief or trust in medicinal or herbal treatment and also some way into witchcraft anyone living with parkinson's disease anywhere in the world Herbal knows treatments. what stigmatization is stigmatization is bad enough but it can lead to persecution and sometimes this persecution can take on extreme forms. Most people don't know about Parkinson's. Most people don't know. Mm. Here, I mean, in the villages, they are not aware about the Parkinson's. No. They just still think it is something associated with evil spirits. Initially, I thought maybe it's some witchcraft, because since it does not have a cure, some say it's a curse from their ancestor. If they see him, they say, ah, that is a, witch, a witchcraft, they run away. People see it as a, a bad omen or something like that. They associate it with some evil, some spirits which are not there. Mm. Since dad is a pastor, he had a lot of pastor friends coming over. They would come, uh, pray. You now when they were praying and then he starts shaking, you now they would see that those were the manifestation of, of demons. Mm. And they would just insist on casting those demons out of him. I I can see how people would have that impression. I, I really have to pause for a second. I, I don't want to miss. I don't want to. It that may sound kooky to folks, maybe. Um, 
Um, we, we don't have to go into spirituality on this, but I, uh, I could see where folks might have that, but not having any knowledge of the disease, not having any, uh, any experience seeing anybody like this. I could see where they would think it was evil manifest manifesting in somebody as a, some kind of evil spirit or demonic activity. But my goodness, can you imagine people saying this about you? And you're living with something you have no control over. They're my people. I just even personally i have an auntie who was telling you know what that shaking shaking we can be treated it can be treated by local medicines and all that they cut you in small bits in the skin what? So they, they cut they your put skin herbs in those areas that are being incised if let's say you have tremors they'll cut but what on the what do you say Hold on. they'll do several up. cuts and then put they cut you in small bits in the skin. So, and, and then they put herbs in those herbs. areas that are being incised. If let's say you skin. have tremors, they'll cut on the arm. They'll do several cuts and then put some medicine or herbals in those oh. cuts. Wow. They just avoid them. They can transmit the disease to their body through shaking hands. Maybe you come into contact, maybe uh, sitting close to him so we are not seeing them again then they were like blaming him what have you done where have you put yourself are you in some cult or something you see most of the elderly people they are based in the rural areas and most of them they live alone so if you see an old man or an old woman living alone with nothing maybe the way she is she's unkempt you know nobody's looking after her so the next thing she would be branded a witch they have gone to the extent of like just killing the people. Man, there's a lot of old. I mean, I just can't fathom the loneliness these people suffer. Already being alone uh, as an aging adult, and that you know, outside the community for all intents and purposes, already a, in a sense an outcast because they're they're elders. And, and then to, to have this thrust upon them, and then they have this stigma, and, and even killed for this. I just, it's unbelievable. This is so heartbreaking. Old men are being, because uh, they are suspected in the uh, area witchcraft. The youth, they organize a group, and then they go to the the old man, they say he's a witchcraft, and then they kill him. The young oh. people come and kill you if they are sure you are doing witchcraft. Sure. They're sure. The three old men, just last, last, last month, they were killed because of that. They see anything happening that they don't understand how it, it is happening, and how it started, and how it is going. They come to a conclusion that one is be, bewitched. These devilish powers that is working or has been thrown to him. It's very bad mm. because them they is struggling for his life, and yet someone is coming here to to shortcut his life. That's no good. I found myself withdrawing, hiding away after several days of malignant scrutiny and the shocking trauma of what I was hearing began to take its toll on me. After such a roller coaster of medication and emotion, I hit a wall. So I'm totally off meds now because, I don't know, I think we've been pushing hard pace to get this film. This is what it's like being off. Fucking hell. I don't want to be sympathetic or self-indulgent. I just can't imagine how they live. They just rely on families or the goodwill of someone close to them with the threat of possibly people coming to kill them for being witches. And imagine that fear seeing a lot of um, 
some extra increased tremors and also some uh, dyskinesia, dyskinetic movements in his legs. Uh, and I mean, <laughs> I'm just, my, it's heartbreaking to see him curled up in a ball on this, this, this outdoor patio or deck area being completely off medications at this point. And you could see what it would be like for somebody who's had Parkinson's for as long as David has had to be off medication. He's essentially debilitated. Obviously he's getting up on his own here, but um, as he said, it's, it's, it's hell, right? Because he's got no non-motor symptoms. We're not seeing that he's experiencing as well as the physical limitations. They're just trying to exist. Trying to stay alive. They don't even know what they've got. They've not even been told. Truly shame on anyone who stigmatizes and let alone persecutes them. Absolutely. Shame on them. A major change of belief needs to be addressed. The rule of law needs to be enforced. Absolutely. Public awareness of all disabilities needs to be raised. And for heads of state to take this on board and end this brutality. Lakini chakula ni ile tabu tabu. Na vile siendi kazi. Ile ni bidi maisha yangu. Ni kwa hapo sasa rudi. Chini. Ningepata chakula. Can't even eat. First and foremost, people have got to get educated. Can't physically, work. it's just a matter of awareness, education, information, and it can be managed. It's true. I think it's beneficial to the patient. They have the resources. They are not alone, and uh, you can reach out to someone suffering from the same ailment as you. And it takes it's a not village. Something foreign. It's not something it does. unknown. There are support groups where people find more comfort sharing and they get comfortable with their condition. They know and they understand what's going on with their system and their body. I think it's crucial to the long plan of the treatment and management of a patient. Mm. Yes, community is so important. It's a cliche, I think, that this suite has certainly been a roller coaster. But I do think we have scratched beneath the surface of things that people aren't talking about. There's a distinct lack of medication here or access to medication. And I think there's a distinct lack of awareness or total absence of knowledge of what this disease is. It's not witchcraft, it's not superstition, it's not cursed, it's just a disease. And these people have the basic right to be treated like normal human beings. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely they do. We're all children of God. There are glimmers of hope as volunteer support groups begin to emerge in Kenya. Yet these support groups need support themselves, which mm. must come from the government. Mm. Kenya, like any other country, is generally made up of good people. But evil happens when good people do nothing. Ah, oh, it's a great quote. Evil happens when good people do nothing. Mm. That's powerful. Wow. Wow. I forgot Dr. Natasha produced this as well. Oh. Kudos to LSVT Global for putting this out there. Uh, it's helping support this. Uh, if anybody can get the word out, I would think it'd be them. Oop, oop. Sorry, I got a video trying to play in the background. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't even know what to say after that. Um, so well done and uh, very poignant and right to the point and eye-opening, haunting, 
heartbreaking. I know I've said that more than once, but it's true. It's just heartbreaking. It's, I can't even imagine living with this disease and being persecuted for it. Stigmatized, obviously, but as he said, let alone persecuted. It's almost unimaginable yet it's happening. It's happening. It's really happening. Reminds me uh, a lot of a song uh, that was written by Rush uh, from the Moving Pictures album. I, I'm getting into my, you can tell how much of a music geek I am by this comment, but um, Neil Peart's uh, lyrics in uh, the song Witch Hunt. It's interesting that we're talking about witchcraft and evil in this uh, topic. And uh, the song that this quote comes from is Witch Hunt. It's so appropriate for this video. Uh, but the last line of the song, is ignorance and prejudice and fear walk hand in hand. And that is exactly what we're seeing play out in Kenya and anywhere else in the world that is uh, likely a developing country that doesn't understand that this is a disease, not a manifestation of evil. The news needs to get out there. Um, let's do our part to support uh, spreading the news about this film to support uh, any groups that are active in Kenya and in similar countries to get the word out there. And LSVT Global, I'm sure that there are therapists in Kenya that are helping people with Parkinson's because of, of your organization. Um, I know that there are LSVT therapists in Africa. I just don't know about how much in Kenya, but. All right, well, that's all I've got for this reaction. I, uh, I really appreciated David's making this film and the collaboration that it took to get there. And I really encourage you to watch this again on your own and, and share it with others. And uh, till the next reaction video, be empowered.